One of the most prominent features in Zelda Breath of the Wild is the stamina meter. You see this almost the entire game and I think it's where your eyes are most of the time, at least they were for me when I was playing it. And I was wondering if I could create something similar in Garot. So I'm going to try to create a very simple version of it. Of course, I'm not going to go through all the effects, but so you get an idea of how to draw these kind of things. I'm going to be using here, there's like a ruler mode that they added. I don't know exactly when, I think it's 3.2. But if you see here, when I click and drag, you can see like the distance in elements. This is very useful when you're just planning things. But if you notice there, there's like an arc that forms to show the angles on top right and bottom. And I'm going to be using the same function that Godot uses to do those angles to make a stamina meter like in Breath of the Wild. This will be living inside a, node, a 2D node because it's what actually a node that can be placed in a 2D game. And you can also do this in a 3D game, but I'm going to be only working with this in 2d for now and let's add a script let's call this stamina stamina meter okay so first of all let's remove everything as always we don't want most of this template and to do this drawing we will be using the draw function func okay we're also going to need some variables, so for instance, stamina, let's say it's based on a 100 scale, so 0 you have no stamina, 100 you have it full. And since we don't have anything connected as a game, let's do some basic inputs on the process Now This is only for testing purposes, so if input is action pressed, I'm gonna be using the pressed. Um, I'm gonna use the default UI up and UI down. Where is UI up? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna be using the defaults, which are the arrow keys up and down. If it's up, stamina will go up by one. And if input is action pressed, UI down is going to go down. Okay, I want to print this stamina to see if it's working and let's try it out very quick. Of course, saving the scene, so testing scene. And we see here that it's doing that. If I press down, it goes down. If I press up, it goes up. The problem is that we are getting over 100 and under zero. So to fix that, there's a function which is called clamp. So stamina equal to clamp. And now you set which variable you want to clamp. In this case, it's stamina. And what's the minimum value? Zero. And what's the maximum value? 100. So that way, I'm going to select this testing. That way, when we are pressing down, it goes to zero. And even if I keep pressing down, it cannot go lower. But if I press up, it goes to 100. And it cannot go higher than 100. So that's it. That, that would be what you have in your game. And this is the variable that you might be using in this case. Of course, it's just for testing. Now, let's go to the drawing part of this. We want to represent this with an arc. The function that we're going to use, it's called draw arc. And first argument is the center. So since this is a new function that I found in 3.2, it doesn't have any documentation. But the arguments are enough for you to understand what, what is this all about. In this case, what I'm usually doing when I'm learning something like this is I copy the documentation settings and I add a comment on top of it. So I have a reference of what the arguments are. So this is easier for us to, you know, like be using them, even if you have them while you're typing, just as a reference. So now center, this is the center where the circle is going to be. In this case, we don't want it anywhere else, but in the zero position, which is right now this X node, the, the position that we are. Uh, by the way, I made this full screen by pressing here in the distraction free mode. Since we're only going to be using code, I don't really need the, the rest of the stuff. Uh, 
but yeah it's gonna make things clearer i can also make even the font bigger for people watching in mobile okay so we have the first one now the radius this is basically the size that we want to have the circle in this case uh let's start with 40 which is a random number and let's see if we want to make it bigger or smaller now the starting angle since this is an angle that we're doing and not a circle we need to start and end in the same place so that way we have the full thing and it looks like a like a ring you will see it now better since we don't know the values let's start with a random number and later on i can set the ones that i discover are the best ones now with the end angle the same we want to end somewhere let's end in zero and see where zero is now we go to point count this is how many sides the arc will have. So if we have 10, it will have 10 corners. But if we add more, you're going to have more. Uh, let's start with something like 20 and see if we need to add more or less. Now we need a color. I got a green, which is kind of similar to the one used in Breath of the Wild, but you can use whatever color you prefer. 71E958. Okay, this is going to be the color of the arc. Now the next variable is the width. Let's start with something like 10. And last one is anti-alias. So we want to have this to true, so the borders are not very sharp. But I created an, an issue in GitHub because when I was testing this code in my Mac, I could see the anti-aliasing working. But here in Windows, it is not working. Uh, from what people told me in the GitHub issue, which is right now on screen, I hope, it could be because of my graphics card, or maybe it's just a bug from the engine. But I would recommend you to leave it on, and if you can see it, good, and otherwise you will see the default one. So let's see what happens when we run the project now. Okay, we see, we have an arc. It's a little bit thinner than we expected and it's not entirely completed we can see like the anti-aliasing is not working but at least we have something going on right now it's not tied to anything to the stamina or anything it is just the drawing of that thing so let's try to now tie it with the with the stamina and making it look a little bit closer to what we have in Zelda. I was testing for a while and the variables that seems to be good are for the width, 37 seems to be the good one. The start angle, it's 4.7 and the end angle is minus 1.6. I got this but by testing a lot of the values, let's see how it looks. Okay, now we're having a better circle. If you see, there's not enough corners for it to completely close and since this is meant for drawing arcs i think that this part over here it's having that issue so let's add more sides to it here it's the point count i found that 800 was a very good number to make it look very round and good okay so we have it now and since we're gonna be using this and later on you will want to have like a smaller circle around like in that or you want if you want to add some different arcs i will move this into a function so instead of drawing it using the draw arc, let's create our own so we can duplicate it and do as many arcs like this as we want. Bank draw stamina meter. Let's go like that. So we will want to have the position, we want to have the size because that's of course like relative to whatever we want, the width and the current value and the color. With this properties we will have enough to make a good arc so let's copy the code that we have and let's replace the arguments so now position will be this one the size remember was the size it was this one the 40 now we will go to this and this the points we want to have them 800 because we know that we are going to be using circles color is going to be the color that we set and the width is going to be 37. The anti-aliasing we want it always on. 
So now let's replace this with the name of the function that we created. So position, it's going to be vector2. Size is going to be 40. Width is going to be 37. And we are going to create the variable that we're going to be modifying, which is current angle. And let's set it to the minimum. And this is the value that we are sending as current to track the position of it. And the color will be the color that we set before. So now that we have it, let's try it out. It should be the same as we did before. Okay, it's looking good. So now instead of making it like complete like that, let's go back to the zero version of it. Let's try it out again. It's not finished. Okay. And let's add the background to it. So we can add the background. And it's going to be like all the size 1.6. And for color, I'm going to do something like a transparent gray. So R is going to be RGB 0 and 0 0.5. The width has to be the same and now if we see we're gonna have like the background to it yeah okay so now we have the green part on top and the dark part behind it and now for the last part let's save this as variables so mean angle it's the minimum that we had before max angle is the maximum because we're going to be needing these values let's replace them max angle here minimum here so if you want to make it not a circle you can just modify this too and let's translate this value to a scale that we can actually get from the stamina so if we are 50 percent in the stamina meter we want to display the green arc only until here and if we are in 20 percent, we want to go there and if we are zero just zero so to do that, we have to do like a rule of three, but a little bit confusing one. So we want to have the main angle. We want to modify, multiply by minus one. So we make it positive because we need to get the distance, like, like the interval, sorry. And we add the max angle and we divide everything by 100. So the current angle is going to be the max angle minus the stamina multiplied by value. Uh, just for this case, I think it works enough. It's very weird that it's from minus 1.6 to 4.7. It would be great to have these values in draw arc from 0 to 360 60, like degrees. But since it's not like that, we just do that thing and that's it. One last thing, if you notice now, we are going to be updating this current angle. We're not sending it to this. So let's get the current and current is going to be that one. Okay, now everything should be set. But whenever we are using the draw function, it will not update automatically every frame like it, the process one does. So if we try it out and I press up and down, let's go back to this mode. You see that the variable is changing in the output in the terminal but the drawing is not. To make it update, you need to call the update function. So since we know that we're gonna be pressing these two buttons when we want to update it, let's just go here and check if up is pressed or down is pressed. So if we press any of those keys, we want to update. You have to call this function, which will make the draw function update, which will call our own function that draws the, let's see, for ground, okay, draws the arc. Okay, hope that made sense. Now, if we are, okay, let's see, 50%, we go to zero, and we have the thing ready. I think it looks kind of nice, of course, like we could add more effects in, I think that in the game whenever you are on 100 like there's like a bright green on top of everything like when you're like getting less like you get like a red thingy over there but you get the idea like with this you can draw everything like this so now that we have this function let's try out 
drawing a different one. We don't need the reference anymore. Okay. Let's draw a different one, like around it. Let's see, let's make it like this was the size, right? Yeah, second size. Let's make it a little bit bigger and a little bit thinner. And let's do like uh, red. Let's see, I have here. Okay. And instead of using current angle, let's do just a random number, like to, I don't know, like to see how it looks like. It's not going to be bound to anything. But yeah, we have here the outer ring is the one that we just added there. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you like it. And I'm sure that you can extend this to a lot of your games. You can make it look whatever you like. You can add twin to it to make it go smoother instead of just updating the position like that but i hope that you found this draw arc function useful and that you can use this in your games i would really like to invite you to my discord channel which you can use to ask me any question regarding the tutorials or if you want to talk with other people that are making programs or just got at projects in general just join with the link in the description and if you want to help me make more of these videos you can always find a link to my patreon and it's thanks to the patrons that I can be doing these videos. So thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.